What have you been up to ever since? Some skating. I tried to come back after my win in Vancouver to compete in the 2014 Sochi Games, but some injuries and subsequent surgeries kept me out. Uh, and then I went on to work for a real estate firm called Charter. Mm -hmm. well, how did uh, you get involved in real estate after that? Honestly, I wasn't sure what to do after skating ended. It had been my whole life, and, and my focus was so singular towards that gold medal. Uh, and I had a friend, Dan Zelson, who was one of the founding partners of Charter, and just said, it, it's a great stepping stone, if nothing else. I learned a lot. I worked on the property rep side uh, in commercial leasing. And Mainly I wonder big how box. many young athletes struggle with the exact same transition. Mike. Well, yeah, I was going to actually ask that because you hear about the difficulty with the transition. On the other hand, there's also the, the sense that somebody who is able to dedicate everything to one single goal, that you can kind of redeploy that. True. I mean, is that possible or is that sort of not really? I believe it is, yes, and I'm appreciative to Dan Zelson and my current employer, Vera Wang, another good friend of mine. I work for Vera Wang Group now for believing that those skills that I learned as an Olympic athlete are transferable to other industries. How did you get to know, so Vera Wang's designing the uh, outfits uh, now, right? Is that how you got to know her? Or? Uh, she dressed me for my Olympic performances and she's also dressing a skater tonight, Nathan Chen from the United States. Right, right. We have high hopes for him. Uh, and so I got to know her very well because it's a close working relationship between coach, choreographer, uh, and clothing designer. And I knew working in real estate that I wanted to be more on the brand side. So Vera was my first stop, and I basically asked her for a job. My role has evolved since then. I've been with the company over three years, but I'm very lucky. I feel fortunate to be given those opportunities. Oh, sure. Someone took a chance on me. What's the state of, of uh, figure skating for the U.S. right now? I mean, in terms of trying to evaluate where it sits. Uh, yeah, hard to, to predict. The rest of the world. Hard to predict because so much can go wrong, but the state of U.S. figure skating on the men's side is incredible. Nathan Chen is definitely one of the heavy, heavy favorites for gold. A lot of pressure on him. Um, it's hard to skate free when you start winning internationally, even domestically, because then people expect it. So you're doing these really difficult, physically grueling tricks with like the weight of 10 worlds on your shoulders. Uh, so I'm hoping that he can skate relaxed tonight. I know that he's trained and, and ready to go, and he's going to look great. <laughs> uh, you guys are going to make sure of that. Definitely. Uh, one question we always like to ask people, maybe especially relevant for you, is what's the biggest money mistake you've made along the way? Well, training for an Olympic Games is very expensive. Uh, the United States Olympic Committee receives no federal funding, funding, so it's all privately funded. And a lot of athletes rely on corporate sponsors. I was very lucky to have incredible companies behind me like Coca-Cola, Ralph Lauren. Um, but I paid a lot of money to train year over year over year. Did that mean the, a lot of debt or where did that money come from at the time? Not necessarily debt, but when it ended after three years unsuccessfully and with no uh, medal in Sochi, therefore not being able to reap the financial benefit of success at the Olympic Games, it was a tough pill to swallow. And what happens? Do the sponsors kind of then just drop you? I mean, that must be extremely difficult after having been at the absolute sort of peak of where you could be. It's, I mean, it's difficult anyway. It's difficult standing on that podium and then stepping down and knowing that you probably will never experience that personal high again. And you're like, I'm trying to. I'm trying to find that in business. But it's such a, a private victory, which to me superseded the public. And finding that again is hard. And I'm fortunate to have had the backing of some of the most incredible multinational corporations in the world. When I competed, I didn't expect that to go on forever. I knew that they would want to, rightfully so, capitalize on the current and most valuable Olympians as well they should. And so your advice to anyone going through that same uh, gamble now, frankly, trying, you know, the training, what would, what would it be? There's no way to combat it. I, I mean, I think the answer is yes, dream big, put everything that you can into training, be smart, of course, with investment where you can and save money where you can. But um, you almost have to go for broke as an Olympic athlete. You only get that shot once every four years. And to me, it was so worth it the first time around to put everything in and get the gold medal out that I was perfectly willing. Hey there, thanks for checking out CNBC on YouTube. Be sure to subscribe to stay up to date on all of the day's biggest stories. You can also click on any of the videos around me to watch the latest from CNBC. Thanks for watching.